Well, it's, it's, it's been an off week, and it was great to have an off week. Um, I, I think we needed it uh, from a standpoint of just getting well uh, and also getting our minds cleared out a little bit. We've had some tough losses, um, led in a couple games and got beaten uh, in the second half. And so it's just a great time uh, to have an off week. I think our players really uh, came back yesterday uh, uh, really enthusiastic, uh, and, uh, and a lot of our guys are healed up and um, looking forward to uh, uh, the week this week. But uh, again, they, uh, um, uh, we just, we just, the key right now is just to go out there and continue to play as hard as we can, uh, put our best, get, get our best performance out there on Saturday uh, and, uh, and get some improvement uh, to play an outstanding Texas State team. Um, and um, Texas State brings in a team that it's, it, they're really on a roll, but the, re the record doesn't show it. They, they beat uh, Appalachian State and then they've had two tough losses to teams that were uh, 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 pretty good football teams, uh, uh, Southern Miss and Southern Miss and uh, Troy, and lost by just a couple of points. And uh, I know Texas State, like us, isn't looking for, for moral victories, but it, it's, it looks to be it, they're, they're trending upward. And so we've got a great opportunity on our hands, and uh, we've had some tough losses as well. The scores aren't quite the same, but the games were played quite the same in, in, in the way in which we played uh, and then uh, I couldn't hold on in the second half. So, um, again, a great place for a good time to have a home game. We, we, uh, we, we, our kids enjoy playing at home. Uh, um, we, ha we need to have a good week of practice. It's Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday are, are our practices. Need to have a good week of practice. We've had, we had uh, a lot of game preparation. What we did is we came out after our game in Army and came out Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday and got our practices in got our coaches working late, get our game plans down as far as the studying the film. And then our coaches went recruiting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And our players, we had a scrimmage on Wednesday for the players that aren't playing much. And then the players got some rest on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so I think that was the best way for us to get accomplished what we needed to get accomplished. And uh, uh, and so we'll, we'll go into this week uh, not too banged up. I mean, I mean, every, everybody, I don't like to talk about injuries because everybody has them. Every now and then you've got one that's worse than others or a star of this or a star of that guy. But we have them just like anybody else. But we expect guys to step up and play. So, again, uh, um, we're looking forward to it, uh, um, to getting back out there and uh, uh, after a good week of practice. Yes, sir? Hey, Coach, you know, technically all is a loss. You, know, uh, you guys can run the table and still get into a bowl game very well. Uh, but in a season where I guess there was more hope, Mm -hmm. players. How do you convince players, you know, not give up? Well, you, again, that's, that's my job. I think the most, uh, the most important thing a head coach can do, uh, and I can look back from experience uh, of, of going through the transition period, is to keep morale up, keep kids positive and believing uh, in themselves and not getting discouraged. It happens to everybody. It happens to coaching staffs. It happens to everyone. Shoot, I wake up and have to knock the daggum vultures off my headboard in the morning, you know, sometimes just to get myself in a positive mood because I set the tempo. But I think the key is just remember my job is to, is to make sure those players uh, uh, are encouraged, uh, that you continually to uh, build great morale. I'm a positive as opposed to a negative head coach, uh, and I try to build on those type of, of, of uh, um, uh, messages that I, that I relay to the players um, and just continue to get better. The key is just continue. All we can do is continue to get better uh, and, and, and get better each week and see where our mistakes are and, and correct those. Uh, and, then, and then, like you say, the most important thing is to keep the morale up. All, all you can do is just – is is like your own children, like anybody else. You just you build a positive. You're positive with your young men every day, knowing that it's tough going through uh, losses, uh, but somewhere along the line you got to do it. And at some point when it turns, it it, uh, it all makes sense. What are some of the things that you guys were emphasizing going into the bye week, and how happy are you with the progress that you? Caused? Well, I mean, I think the main thing is get well. And get our spirits up. I mean, again, you get that, that that's the main thing you want to do when you got an off week at a point in time like this. You know, if you're having a running a four a four game winning streak, you kind of don't want a break. You kind of want to let the momentum flow. Uh, when you've lost some tough losses and you've gone through that, the break can give you a chance to mentally get away from it, and then to and to, and to recharge your batteries. And so that was the most important thing. What little nicks and bruises we might have, get them well. Uh, get our kids excited about coming to practice and getting ready for this ball game, uh, and like uh, uh, and like you w was mentioned, uh, you, you, you can win all four, go to a bowl, but you, it starts with one. It has to start with one. 
but that's the way it always does. It always starts with one. And so um, our players have, have got to focus on the positive. And so now, now do we do we need to work on creating turnover? We have not created turnovers the last few weeks. You know, uh, we haven't had too many turnovers, but we're losing the turnover battle just by not creating turnovers. You know, uh, and and so when you don't have a lot of turnovers, you don't win that turnover battle. That's another thing that really goes against you uh, is the turnover battle. And so you've got to really uh, we work on that a little bit, just on creating turnovers and, and making sure we fundamentally go over those t type of types of things like stripping the football, uh, securing the football, things like that. But basically, uh, but but basically, just making sure we we touch up on the little things that we do in uh, in the way we play. I do believe our offense has got another surge. I believe we have another surge for our offense. Uh, and our defense, I think I think our defense can play a lot better as well. So I think there's a, a better day ahead for us. Uh, but it all starts with being good at the fundamentals uh, and making sure we can block and tackle, throw and catch football. Coach, you and Texas State are uh -huh. at the bottom of the Sun Belt uh -huh. scoring. What, do you, what does your offense need to do to finish or get a win on Saturday and close out these close games? Well, you know, we've been so close, and, and I've seen such good progress. And, and uh, uh, but, but I still think we're, we're, we're a touchdown or two away. From from being in those thirty fives, you know, and that's where you where that that seems to be kind of where you need to be. We've had two games where we did not do well in the red zone. I'm talking about. Uh, I know it was this past game, and the other one might have been Arkansas State, or I can't remember which one it was. We were down there three times inside the fifteen, didn't score, and this past week we we're inside the the ten yard line twice and got three points. That can be a difference in a game. So you got to finish in the red zone. Uh, that may mean running it better or recognizing that you don't need to run at all and use the early downs to pass, but, but decide what you're going to do that's best for us and finish a little bit better. But defensively, we've got to help us out now. We've got to get off the field. We've got to get up off the field. We've got to create turnovers and field position. If you look at Army, where they started the field position the entire game and where we started the entire game, we're not doing enough things in our kicking game also to make sure we win the field position battle and give a shorter field. Because usually any time you move down the field, the increase, the chances of getting a touchdown increase the further you go down the field. And so that's where we've got to improve that way. So I think offensively, we just got to keep it, keep pushing to get better at what we do, uh, finding our athletes. You know, we found Ty Howell a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Alred Luke, uh, we found him a couple of weeks ago as well, and we need to put all that together. Uh, and then I think as our defense continues to improve, that will help as well. But yeah, to me, there is another level of the offense we got to go, uh, whether it's through – explosive plays or just uh, uh, more consistent finishes on the goal line or red zone. I think those two areas that we've got to do. Coach, I know you guys spent a lot of time in Vegas. Uh -huh. The last two games of South Alabama and Army, the third quarter was really a problem. Played well the other three quarters. Right. Have you been able to pinpoint maybe what the reason is for coming out slow after the half? No, I wish I could because that that's that that's a huge factor. Is that they, we come out and they make plays and we don't. And and again, uh, just got to do a great job of, uh, of of making sure we make the right adjustments at halftime and that we uh, and we do things that don't lose the game in in, a, in the third quarter. But that's been the case. But I, you know that and the ba the bad thing is you know exactly what you want to do. Your 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 halftime discussion with the players. Your your final final. Uh, uh, talk to the players before you walk out the restroom is let's go out there and let's turn this thing around real quick. Uh, and it, it has gone the other way. And so one, I'm not sure there's a, there's one surefire where, why, surefire way to make it happen except do the, do the little things that win as opposed to the little things that don't let you win. Uh, uh, when you come out of that halftime, because that's 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 important because it has been uh, uh, a difficult quarter for us the last couple of games. Coach, you've been around, around a lot of good quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Chandler Rogers put together an unbelievable October. I think he had a touchdown and an interception ratio of 10 to 2, and his pass rating was 180. Where have you seen him make that next step? I know you obviously you won the job. Uh -huh. He had a lot of confidence coming this year, but where is he really taking his game to the next level? Well, he does a great job of, 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 of not having negative plays. Uh, I think as you look at the way he does it, you don't see him just throwing the ball away if nothing's open. He makes decisions uh, where he can run and get a first down or run and get extra yardage. Uh, so not only that, does that put us in a better field position or a better, or better down and distance position, but it gives him an, it really improves his percentage completion incredibly. Uh, and so, so um, 
it, it's just he's got a he, he understands what the what we need to get out of each play and, and does a great job with it. Early in downs on early downs and we want to take a play and and, and maybe they think we're going to run we're going to and we throw the football in an early down. Uh, if it's not there, he's been a great job of making a quick decision. If they have leave something open, to go ahead and take that run because that's the run you didn't call. Then you know if, if you don't call a run but you call a pass, you hopefully catch him off guard. But if you don't, your quarterback then makes six or eight yards. It's a running play, and so you kind of got both things done. So I think he's just done a great job of taking advantage of every play that's called and making good decisions. I actually would like him to make a little more bad decisions. That is keeping the football once in a while even if he gets tackled. I just think him taking the ball and keeping it outside, uh, even if they were to – they look like they've got it covered, I think he's athletic enough to make a play. And I think that's way we can get more plays. Because I think offensively, the thing that I'd like to see us do is, again, get a higher percentage of successful running plays. We have huge plays, but we have a lot of one- and two-yard gains that you'd like to see us do a better job. But I think you've got to do utilize the quarterback and his keeps, the RPOs, and all those things to make that work. Because uh, we are having a, we're, we're running the ball pretty well, you know, uh, a lot better than we did last year. And it's we're very committed to the running game. I just want us to get a little bit more explosive in it. And uh, uh, and hurt the defense a little more with the quarterback uh, as well as the running backs. Hey, Coach, look at Texas State. This, uh-huh. You know, is on top of the world offensively, defensively, and the Sun Belt for many years. I mean, outside of the uh, Baylor game, what do you think happened to the, the football team over the last year? What's that now? I said, look at Texas State. They were doing so well offensively and defensively for the last few years in the Sun Belt, and now it's kind of like a fall from grace, essentially. You're right. You're right. Well, I, I can't really look at them over to the years, uh, but I think I, I think they uh, it kind of it kind of goes as comes with a with a quarterback. You know, when you have a quarterback that's way above, or you have a special, you hardly ever have a great offense without a great quarterback, and that doesn't mean a great NFL quarterback, but a great college quarterback. And I think that's where it starts when you got that quarterback that can 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 pull the trigger. He can make great decisions. He can manage the offense. He can he he has the respect of his teammates. So there's great uh, control. Uh, as a leader in the in, in, on the field, um, I think all those things make uh, are a factor. Um, I can't really say exactly uh, uh, why they haven't been better at that, but at, well, as well as they were in the past. You know, I can't say that for sure. Again, I can only go back to when we played them last year at the end of the season uh, and this year. Um, but uh, I know one thing: they played pretty damn good defense uh, the last few weeks, and that's where I'm concerned because if we don't score, they sure got a better chance of winning the football game, and that's what they've been pretty good at. Uh, sticking on the defense side of the ball, uh, Woodard, how good he's played, how impressive have you been, especially with that fourth and one stop. Well, uh, the, the, but, but our defense. Well, I mean, we we have been. Um, well, I mean, we, we, we need to get better. I mean, we had a good stop there, but I think we have, we, we have, we have struggled to get off the field. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we started out, we started out uh, going in the right direction. We just have to have struggled to get off the field. So defensively, we just got to get 11 people. I think we've got we've to really identify the 11 to 15 people that we can count on and make sure they're on the field. Uh, and we've got them in the best, best position to be successful. Uh, but I, but I feel very confident. I've got a great bunch of coaches over there, and I know they've been through the wars many, many times, and they've also coached a lot in this conference. And so I know that uh, uh, as we continue to develop our players and make them more comfortable playing our defense, they will continue to get better.